there's a whole bunch of positive stuff happening for, for the precious metals complex. Gold's going up, silver's going up. Uh, the 10-year minus the two-year is, um, is starting to maybe show signs that it wants to turn up. Look, if the U.S. initial jobless claims could spike up, I have like a level at 241,000. But if I start breaking out above that, uh, the, the gold versus SPX chart, the 10-year minus the two-year, uh, even the, the, the miners, they track. I could overlay that to the uh, U.S. jobless claims. The ebbs and flows, they, they, they track. So the, mine, the, the setup's there for the miners to break out, to do it, have a great run. But I, don't, I just don't get it why you would... Patrick, what's going on? How are you? Hi, Andy. Yeah, if I'm doing uh, I'm doing great there. So always uh, happy to, to to catch up and talk charts there. Should be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. So uh, real quick, what's it like in Montreal right now? You're in, out of Montreal, right? Yeah, I'm North Shore Montreal. Yeah, the weather, the summer's been great. Uh, you can't ta can't ask uh, for 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 much better than that. So just trying to enjoy the summer before it evaporates away. Because that's the thing, when you get four seasons and you have harsh winters, it makes you appreciate more the, 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 summer, the summer months and they just fly by fast. So yeah, just uh, trying to enjoy every day there. If it's nice outside, go out with the kids, go to the beach, do something. But uh, as tempting as it is to, to stay in front of the screen all day there, you gotta, gotta try not to do that there. Gotta get out and about. I'm in Atlanta here and uh, we just had a death, a death march of humidity and uh high uh high temperatures we're in the hundreds and just a lot of humidity so i'm yeah. looking forward to a change of the season now so why so but uh You're, you don't have rain you don't have the snow right there's no snow in that in that planta. never very right? very little i mean every couple of years we'll get a snow that lasts for two three days <laughs> oh, <goodness. laughs> it's, I mean, yeah. that's almost fun yeah so everybody uh, i this is what i tell everybody is like you can go um i will take july and august for uh, September through uh, June, those are nice months. Yeah. <laughs> so, but let's start. Let's talk some charts. Let's start out with gold. Uh, again, I want to congratulate you. When we last talked to you, was actually uh, silver was looking real interesting. And when we had you on, uh, you said you literally said silver looking really, really good. It looks like it's going to break out. And why we were talking wasn't why they caught talking. Literally the next day, silver broke out. So. Great call. Thanks for that. And I know sometimes timing is not on our side, but timing was on your side on that certain, yeah, certain it, moment. It's, it's like, it's all about probabilities of these possible moves. And it could have very well not moved the next day or like taken more time. So, you know, it's like, it's always uh, top collars or bottom collars. They always go down in like, uh, you know, oh man, he called the top. Well, I'm pretty sure that same top collar try to call it a lot of tops along the way, right? Because at the, at the beginning of a run to the end, there's only one top. Yeah. But most of the time, you'll call more than one top along the way, right? You think, you, you think it's a top. So, but if you take that average, it's usually maybe 10% of the time you're, you're right. But people yeah. always, it's like that expression there, uh, a broken clock is right twice a day. Yeah. So I, <laughs> if it happens, it's a top. I try not to, to uh, it's fun. You want to kind of brag, but you shouldn't really because it's more an outlier. If you're really honest, it's more an outlier chance. It just happened there. But yeah. right now what happened with silver, I probably have to review the chart, but yeah, 25, it was actually like a, a coiling consolidation and the price was hammering. And what happens is in TA, when you have confirmed breakouts, especially from flat planes, that means you have a higher high and you had previously low, uh, higher lows. And that's just an uptrend. So you're there and you're, you're saying, well, oh, good, good, good. It's going up, but uh, it's just like an uptrend that was, that's got, that got enacted above a certain level. So it, a professional chart trader, his job is to identify those key levels. And the better a chart trader is, the more he's able to look at the more important trend lines and signals and avoid the noise. Because I remember in my beginnings, it's like, I saw head and shoulders everywhere. I was yeah. severe, steep trends lines like that. It would break down. Oh, it's, it's, it broke down. It's going to go down. No, it's like there's meaning and nuance to all these trend lines, right? A flat plane will be more meaningful than a slanted one. The length 
it would be more important. Remember, bigger the base, higher in space. Yeah. So that's, I think, what differentiates an experienced chart trader versus uh, someone who's just starting out is we're able to discern the noise. Just like, a, I don't know what's a famous basketball player like uh, Michael Jordan. Yeah. They're, they're able to, to see what's important. They'll position themselves to make the high probability shots and they won't run around like a rookie who has a whole bunch of energy that's just wasting energy left and right, right? The veterans. They know they're slower. They'll just be positioned at the better places because they have experience. So that's what a, a chart, an experienced chart trader brings to the table is he'll be, he'll, he'll jump less on the gun and try to say, that's the top, that's the bottom. He won't do those mistakes. I'm putting in quotes there because essentially it's like you're, 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 you're trying to aim for bragging rights, but most of the time that, that, that stuff's going to backfire, right? So if it happens, it's great. Professional chart trader just won't care. Okay. It, it happened to be the top, right? Because the top will only know in hindsight. It happened to be the top. That's fine. I don't care because I'll never short the top. I will short the important topping structure that breaks down. I will short that. And the top will always be in hindsight. Just like the bottom, when I play, I never, never pick the bottom. Because I only know in hindsight. So if I'm really truthful to myself, it's kind of nonsense to say, oh, it's cheap. Because for everybody who tried to buy it on the way down, that's cheap. And I look at Palladium. Palladium was, I don't know, close to 3,000. Then it was cheap at 2,000, cheap at 1,500, cheap at 1,000. It's like... Just gets cheaper. Yeah. It just gets cheaper. And people say yeah. it can't get cheaper. And as soon as you say that, it, it could get cheaper. Yes. Or even worse than that, well, I don't know if it's worse, but it goes sideways forever. Yeah. So you're stuck. And then you say, well, I have to keep DCAing, dollar cost averaging in, into something that's flatlining. It, it, it breaks my heart because there could be NVIDIA going up. There could be something else going up. And you're there... And you're just DCAing and something that might break out in one year, two years, two years, five years, might never break out for crying out loud. Never. Yeah. So that's no, like, glad, you know. I'm glad you said that. I really appreciate your, your candor and your humility. And that's uh, the markets will teach you both to be candid, be real <laughs> and be blunt it's, uh, and be very humble because they will humble you. Yes. And so. it's like, just if I could add more on like this philosophy sure. of trading there, it's, all, high, all, all we do is draw trend lines in hindsight. And I realize that also like sometimes I have a, let's say I have a chart, big picture chart, and then there's a huge uh, 30 year rising trend line and then I draw it and then there's bounces. But in real time, I might've had shorter term rising trend lines that faltered, that created these lows higher up. So there's a whole bunch of broken trend lines along the way to that bigger pattern. In hindsight, say, oh yeah, of course it's clear that that was the trend line, that final trend line that led to the ultimate move that went all the way back down. But in real time, it's, it's not that obvious. There'll be a lot of whipsaws, there'll be a lot of loss of momentums or momentum regained, and then the bull era continues. So you gotta be really honest when you, like, you, know, you think you have the perfect recipe for, for drawing trend lines, the perfect recipe to know when the bull market's ending or started because it's not that clear cut, it's nuanced. There's no magical trend line. Each one that breaks is just giving a signal about flowing or accelerating momentum. And eventually, eventually one of those trend line breaks will be the one that leads to the massive bull run eventually. But trying to be a hero and always saying that I called it, like I don't really focus on that anymore. Like maybe at the beginning it was fun because you're trying to build confidence in your trading framework saying, hey, I'm able to, you know, to, to manage that. But like you said, the market's humbled me so many times that it took more time to play out the roadmaps I could have ever had imagined if they, they did play out in the direction I imagined, that even that should humble anybody. Like, okay, look, the market, I, I thought gold, let's say we would, after the 2020 run, oh, it's going to go, that's it, the bull era started. No, gold kept underperforming SPX. And now we're four years later and gold is still, yeah, maybe we should cover these charts. Gold is still underperforming SPX. It's, uh, nothing's won there at all. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, let's talk about the charts. Let's, uh, let's start with gold here. Um, yeah, what are the charts uh, telling you? And um, is this a tradable uh, rally or we're up around $2,400, $2,500 worth? Okay, so this, this is the gold. This is my setup I like a lot. It's the monthly chart, log mm -hmm. scale. Always, all you guys always put log scale. There's no reason ever to put it on linear scale. And this, this is at the bottom pane is my distance from my 36 month moving average. So essentially this is my FOMO gauge. Gauge, gauge, how do you pronounce that in English? The, gauge, uh, yeah. Gauge, gauge. Gauge, gauge. Or, like the reservoir. It's my yeah. fuel reservoir. 
I could look historically, I could draw a trend line here. And it tells me that, I'll just zoom in on this. How far can the price be above that 36 month moving average before it's, it's crazy? Like every, like, you know, it's the price is uh, so high. They're talking, your grandma's asking you about gold. Uh, it's everybody's, crazy. Like it's, it happens here. It doesn't. So in TA, the more meaningful lines are the ones that are touched the most often. So of course, somebody could always take this outlier chance, outlier mm -hmm. thing and say, well, look, in the 1974, gold was able to stretch itself 127%. But we have the uh, advantage of having a lot of data. So saying that that's going to happen again and basing your projections based on that outlier chance or even here, this one, here's what happened. Let's say one time, two times, and three times. Three times, gold was able to stretch itself 121%. But that's over, what's the sampling rate? How many months? Do we have yeah. since 1968 to today? So now you're talking about less than a percent chance that this happens again, right? To be right. able to stretch yourself. So people are always, you know, and I used to do it, you know, like I could set a target that far away, but in all probabilities, that's not what the evidence is telling you, right? That's an outlier chance and something to, to have a 1980 peak here like gold did, like distance away from its moving average is highly unlikely, highly unlikely at this stage, right? It's mm -hmm. this, these are outlier events. So I'll bring you where, so as a chart trader, you want to see what's the resistance level, but the most meaningful resistance level do I have? And so now you're looking for places where you'll have many touches. Here's one, two, okay, got close here, three, got close here, four, here a little bit above here. So I have some type of pivot line here where I'm stretched where I am able to, so I want to start setting up my, my profit limits, my targets, but I'm not too stretched to think that it's a lower probability event. So now this is instead of just having one, two, three times, I had it one time, two, three, let's say four, I could lower this a little bit there, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you see, I have, now I have more chances of that being a more probable tar target, but look at this, look at where we are now. The more I raise this line, the mm. probabilities of me reaching it are lower and lower, right? Because I, I'm removing data points from that possibility of being stretched. So look, I'll just, I'll just show you what it did in 20, uh, after the break on 2019, all the peak in 2020. <sighs> look, that's where we are. This is the fuel. This is the fuel we have left. I'm gonna put a label. The price for gold could probably stretch 14% extra above its moving average. Now it's 26, 25% above its three-year moving average. We could have a blow-off move right now before everything, let's say, crumbles. Let's say you're in the camp that uh, we're in a recession, but now we're melting up, going in the recession. And then when everybody realizes it's bad, we're going to like sink, you know? Yeah. So let's say if that's the, the ongoing scenario, then gold has a chance right now to go up another to go up 50, 40% uh, above its three-year moving average. So what does that mean here? I'll put, here's my three-year moving average. What did I say? Uh, 40%, 41%. Yeah. So the red line is my three-year moving average. I'm going to put this, uh, what did I say, 41? Yeah. 40, 40 about, 41 about. So here I'm going to add my, it's crazy. I use trading you so much and I still sometimes, uh, Say, where's my, uh, where are my tools? <laughs> here. So he, here, let's say the three-year moving average keeps going up this way because the sampling rate, you're always having price points above. So this, let's say gold would rocket upwards from here and I would stretch myself 41% above my three-year moving average. This could be my target right now. Like if ever gold reaches 2,800, like in a timely fashion, the next two, three months, Oh my goodness, is that uh, would be an awesome place to really like take profits, right? It's yeah. like that's, and I'll show you some other like other clues. There is a whole bunch of here, like the basic construct of any bull run is pull flag. So a pull is a, is a move up, flag, pull, flag. And in a bull run, you'll have a succession of these. I'll show you what the 2000 ones would look like. 
you'll have a succession of these where the, it just goes up, consolidates, goes up, consolidates. Every time it consolidates, it lets that yeah. three moving average catch up. And you just yeah. rinse and repeat until it can't do it anymore. So the basic classical chart patterns yeah, that you have once you're out of a base, a huge base, yeah. is a succession of pull flags. Right now, look at that. Where's the flag? So that should scare you. Where's my flag? Because the lower, lower, lower risk entry points are always at the, when a flag breaks out. There's no flag. So right now, right. you're at a pull. That pull, when is it going to end, right? Parabolic melt-ups are always pulls. Look at that. That's a yeah. pull. Parabolic melt-up, pull. But eventually flags, and that flag could either fall or continue upwards. So now, how do I know? So I'm going to put some uh, measured moves here. Like even here, the, the, the base of this pattern added on top, even this, look, that, that measure move, we could have a flag at any moment here. Any right. moment, you could have a flag to let that three moving ca catch up. Uh, if you get greedy, you could say, well, maybe I have, maybe this is, maybe it's this, this pull flag. See, that one would bring me close to my 2800. But it, what would be very logical right now is to have some type of flag here, a halfway flag, and then this, 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 this flag here would be the halfway flag that would lead to this bigger pull flag. You know, it's like uh, Inception there or those Russian dolls, right? The yeah. large pull flag in longer in time frame will have multiple pull flags within it, you know, all, all yeah. the way on route. But, you know, you could have it, you could still have it, you know, like when you get greedy, it's, ah, it's going to go up. It's going to go up straight, you know, but yeah. you're, you're, you're stretching the realm of probabilities the more mm -hmm. you think that's going to happen, you know, I would definitely put my, I could zoom in on the daily. Uh, let's look on the daily. Yeah, let's look on the daily. Okay, let's go on the daily. So here on the daily, I have my distance for my 36-day moving average. And it's stall, it's stalling out actually there. So this is... What's that? Back. I don't so know. Here, here you have, I'll, I'll show you, I'll zoom out. So here on the daily, it's like a range here. So here, when you, once you're... 6% above the 36 day moving average, it's often a place where the price lets, it doesn't mean the price doesn't go up anymore. It means it's slowing down enough that the moving average is catching up, right? So here's like a power, power range, power range. This is blow off top on the daily. And what happened when we stretched to like 8%, everybody was going bonkers here, but that actually marked exactly the, um, I see that's top. Yeah, you know, a, a top the right. flag. It's it, it didn't go up as fast anymore, right? It just right instead of doing. Uh, I'll zoom in on you here. You see, like another beautiful pull flag here. It didn't. It just didn't. Uh, you know, pull flag probably the same distance here. It's it's mm -hmm. like you know, it, that's all it is. Overshot. So it's not going up like this, right? It's not. It's it's having a hard time here. So that's how it is. What I would like to see is a reacceleration. I would like gold to, goodness, it's kind of messy here. I would like to see it break out above this level here. And then we'd have a crazy run. It's kind of a whole fly. It's kind of, it's really messy what it, what it did there recently. Mm, okay. Yeah, right now it's, it's kind of messy because when the price keeps going up, but the momentum is not breaking out, it's kind of worrisome. You want the momentum here to, yep. you want it, you want it to get out of its congestion area right here. Yeah. My ellipse. You want this to resolve upwards and then this thing will have a higher chance of uh, reaching its move. So on the daily, it's, this is probably the neck, my neckline. Mm -hmm. That's a, uh, it's kind of good what it did in that it's, um, it slowed down and let the moving average catch up. But mm -hmm. if you're wondering why the daily is slowing down that much, all you have to do is go back on the monthly. And we saw that the monthly is also starting to, uh, to getting stretched. But there's also, you can't be just fearful of it being stretched, right? It's being stretched, but being stretched and hitting resistance, being stretched and hitting your classical measure move targets, like that 2,800 area, that 3,000 mm -hmm. area. But that's selling to strength. But you could also wait to say, oh, okay, I want to see if it could go to 4,000. So what you have to do after that is you draw a rising trend line a severe one, even on the momentum, eventually maybe we'll have a third bounce here. And if ever the momentum breaks down, then you say, okay, I'm out. 
you're selling into some weakness, but you get at the, you gave yourself a chance of it going back up. So if it doesn't go back up and it falls here and loses that rising momentum, then you would probably bail in some weakness instead of just holding on and letting it do a full reset, opportunity cost, you know, because a correction is either price, a correction or consolidation is uh, done, completed by time and or price, right? You could have price going sideways, letting moving average catch up, or you could have price go down, catching up to the moving average. And that's like, there are two ways. And sometimes it's a combination of both, right? Like when you have yep. a pull flag that's slightly going down. So you don't want, so right now, gold, Still super healthy, but there is a warning sign that the flag has been reached. Like there is one pull flag that has been reached. You should expect some type of correction along the way, but if it doesn't, then it's just this uptrend right here that's going to bring you to that $2,800 target in like, no worries. Like to make this super simple, am I above an inclining 12, 12 month moving average? Yes. Yep. You're, an up, you're an uptrend on that time frame. It's like super, super mathematical, super like, uh, don't want to say we're stupid, but it's, um, you yeah. know, it's, 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 you don't need to be a rocket science in TA to understand that if the price right. is trending, look at, look at what happened in the, the 2000s run. Yeah. Look, look, just up and up and up until it didn't. And when, once didn't. it didn't, it faltered below you, you, you just, you know, you, you get out, right? You never catch the top, never catch the bottom. You ride, you ride the, the bulk of it because what's going to happen is you're going to, let's say you bought on this breakout candle here and you sold on either this one red candle here that closed below or that one. That's yeah. what a professional chart trader is, is, uh, is going for. He's yeah. not going for uh, the, the bragging rights of saying, uh, I bought here and I sold here. If somebody yeah. tells you that, you have to, I, like I showed you, from a probability aspect wise, it's, it's much less probable. Yeah. Al always regularly call tops and bottoms always like to, in hindsight, it looks great, but to reproduce that over time and time is this is hard, hard, this yeah. much easier to do yep. much easier because you're already in an uptrend. And as soon as you start losing the uptrend, you're out, right? It's like, you're not guessing where the top is. You're actually exiting when you're losing a moving average. Yeah, no, that's some great advice. Uh, just taking a good chunk out of the middle. Um, let's talk uh, silver here. What do you see in silver? And again, uh, you're too humble again for this, but I'd say you did have a great call. <laughs> and again, uh, you're not interested in that, but uh, I just really want the world to know that, that when we were talking, silver was breaking out and you called it, so. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, like you said there, we sh like, you know, we shouldn't. Uh... Yeah. I get it, but I want credit where credit's due. But we want, we want, where are we in the middle that we'll get to yeah. the meetings? Yeah. So this, 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 this is like, I think I did a tweet post a while back and I said, the Silver Bulls won. But I think it was on the Corley chart and they did win because what happened on the Corley chart is this is what I call a wall. Previous support, breakdown, yep. that support becomes resistant. So now it's a wall. It tried to close above that wall in 2020. All these, these are quarterly candle closes. Yeah, look at that. And it, it closed above that wall and all the, it did it in the, the, what's that Q2? We did it. It's done. We closed. So now instead of living in fear, the, the burden is on the bears to bring it that, back down below. Because Where now the bulls, yep. the bulls low, higher low. And again, remember when I said horizontal line? Well, yep. what, what, what did that quarterly close create? You see that, that swing high? Higher of high. It's an uptrend. Higher yeah. lows, higher highs, uptrend. And if you don't believe me, just look at the moving average. This is a 12 quarter moving average. So the three- I think that's a great picture right there. Look at that. I mean that like what you just said. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, but yeah, you put, put, put some color on, on my comments there because sometimes, uh, you know- uh, no, I that's help. a great, I mean, that's exactly it. We had a breakout and then what you just said, now the burden of proof is on the bears because your, your, your breakout top is your support now and we're right there. So, you know, if you put a, you don't even have to put a gun to my head. It's like, that's a, that's a bull formation and I'm not as smart as you. <laughs> I'm not smart at all, man. I'm just, you know, I'm just a guy who's been observing charts for, for like, oh, I don't know how long they're there, like a decade. And I, it's just observations that I do, you know, like 
Yeah. If you look at the charts as long as I did. I'm pretty sure you, you, you start seeing the same stuff I see there. And yeah. I'll do with looking at less chart, less charts. And because look at that, it's sometimes it's like, because or else you, you it's like the, the beaten wife uh, syndrome. Like you're, she's always scared that her husband, he raises his hand to grab a coffee mug. She, she thinks he's going to hit her. It's like, right. oh, she, what? Right. <laughs> it's like you're, you're, the, the silver bulls, they've been, they've been, that's what a bear market it's does. So much. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just makes you like, it, it, you know, look, what, what do you want me to tell you? JP Morgan, blah, 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 like all that. Look, you're above a three year moving average. You've closed above that wall. And look, even during the month, like this is a wick here. During the quarter, price went all the way back down to 26, right? I'm sure tons of people were panicking back then, right? Yeah. Like on the daily. They did what I was supposed to do. <laughs> but yeah, you're supposed to panic. A, a silver bull that doesn't panic is not a silver bull. So yeah. No, or, but the, or, chart, didn't, you know? the price did what it was supposed to do. It had a balance right there, right on where it was supposed to. Yes. And that's a test. And there's going to be another test until one day there's no more tests. And now... After that, once you, you, you break out above that there, and then after that, that's, that's in the past. Of course, it could be an outlier event where it comes and severely re retests it. But again, that's the burden of the work has to be done on the bears. You know, The bulls have to always be worried. In a nutshell, the bulls always have to be worried about how stretched I am, am I from the moving average? That's all you have to worry about. Right. Um, how stretched am I? How stretched am I? Way and, to put it, yeah. Yes, that's all you have to worry about. because. It's, it's good for your psyche, for your emotional profile to say, look, I'm stretched. I know my portfolio went up super high, but I got to expect some type of correction there. There's going to be one. It could be long. It could be nasty. There'll be, you know, it'll be some type of crazy correction eventually. Look at that one here. Look, look, silver went up super high above the nine-year moving average. That's the red line. It retested it. So that's it. So the higher the time frame, the more important the moves are. So you got to also yeah. choose, but there's no reason to have gone through all that there because you could have zoomed in on the daily chart, on the weekly chart. Because look, before this quarterly defined correction happens and a retest, look at that, a retest. You're going to love this one. A retest of the, the breakout line. Look at that. The wall, support, 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 support. Breakdown becomes resistance. Can't, in 2016, cannot get back above. So look what happened in 2020. That, so that resistance became support. And look what happened like two, three, two years later, silver retested that. And then it went up. So, but there's no reason for you to go through all that. All you have to do is once here you, ha you start having a daily defined correction happening and a weekly one, you step aside and you, you let that, this nonsense happen until, until the price resolves a year later, two years later. It might never resolve. And once it resolves, mm -hmm. then you get back yep. in right? and, yep. and you avoid. Uh, stackers, guys, have fun. Buy whenever you want, every day, any day. Buy as much silver as you want. Ounces, it's fine. But for a trader, all this yeah. could have been avoided there. Because here yeah. you were stretched from the moving average. Look on the quarterly chart. Oh, yeah, here. See, here's the 1970s. Breakout, outlier event, retest here, support, outlier event. And look here in the 83 resistance, in 80, 98 resistance. 2004 above, went sideways, then bull run for silver, retest from above 2008. Yeah. Go up, up, but look here, resistance, 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 resistance. So the momentum as defined by distance from the 36 quarter moving average, this can make an, a nice poster. We actually just broke out last quarter. We just broke out. So the momentum yep. Yep. Has, has also broken out. And until it closes below that rising trend line, you have to be bullish. Yep. This, okay, I'll do a tangent on this because uh, for me, I, I define two... Bull markets, I have like, I have two names for them. There's, there's a bull market, which is simply the price of an instrument in, in a vacuum going upwards, trending upwards, right? So silver and gold are in bull markets on their own price chart. They've been in there for a while. Even you could make a case, okay, or well maybe here broke out, then a continuation pattern here. So this is 100%. Gold and silver are in bull markets. Yeah. But are they in bull eras? And the answer is no. And I'll tell you why. Because for me, bull era is your price has to be trending upwards, but your, your ratio, your performance versus a major asset class versus let's say gold versus SPX, you have to be also trending up against a, a competing asset classes because okay. that's a bull era. Your okay. price chart is going up, but 
you're going up faster than the other guys. And that means you have capital flows favoring right. your asset class instead of the other. It yep. makes that your nominal price chart will go up faster and harder in, yeah. in the price appreciation. The, the pullbacks will, have, will be buying opportunities more than selling opportunities. You know, they'll have more chances of those pull flags. They'll have more chances of breaking upwards. Mm -hmm. Look at that. This, this is gold. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. Yeah, go ahead. Versus that's that, go ahead. Remove all drawings. Remove. Where am I? Okay, so this is gold versus SPX. Mm -hmm. This is the bull run for gold from 2001 to 2011. So gold bottomed, I don't know, at two, two, three hundred dollars, and then it started up, started putting a bottom versus. Uh, that's the quarterly chart again versus SPX, and then after that. Pull, flag, pull, flag, pull, flag, yep. until last flag just ultimately failed and it ended. But look, this is the issue I have because now, even if gold is at 2,400, it's not Apple for me SPX. What does that mean? That means SPX is going up as fast as gold. So there's still market participants, which are the capital flows, let's say the billions and trillions of dollars. And then uh -huh. there's like a swivel. How much do I go in SPX or do I go in gold right now? It's, you know, it's been 50-50 mm -hmm. since uh, 2018. So for six years right now, SPX has performed equally to gold. Of course, SPX, if I do the dividend adjusted, it's probably beating gold. Right. Because, so, uh, you know, gold is, is just a rock. Right. <laughs> but, so now gold, what it's done is it slowed, it stopped, it's downwards momentum versus SPX. That's step one. Slow down. Because before I could start going up, I need to slow down the momentum. So it's yeah. slowed it down. Yeah. So what you, you want right now is this, this angle trend line right now, it's uh, broken out of, but again, remember, it's the, the most important one is going to be the, the flat plane ones. So you start getting way more bullish gold once it's able to solidly close above dot four seven nine. So I'm looking for dot five. So if ever... Gold is able to close up here, and then it's probably maybe do a retest. That, this is the bull era. This, the breakout, the retest, this is the bull era because the miners track that. Silver yep. tracks it. They're going to they're, they're gonna, they're gonna go bonkers. If yep. you get $8,000 gold or $5,000 gold, you can, but the, the chance of getting those numbers much higher once gold is able to outperform SPX much, much higher. But we're yeah, not- Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, that is that's such a great point. I can emphasize that enough. So bull era, guys, is your instrument out in a bull market on its own, but also outperforming SPX. Because again, why just, if instrument A is going up and instrument B is going up, but instrument A is not outperforming instrument B, why the hell am I holding instrument A, right? Yeah. Why am I, why? I'm telling you, you can make more money holding B. You want to be stubborn and keep holding A? It, it, it's, there's, there's something wrong in the logic there, unless you could find some semantics or some counter logic to that. I, I know I've heard arguments like, well, I think A it will outperform B eventually. Well, okay, fine. But let's wait. Why, why front run that possibility? Just, just wait until it does outperform it, because if it doesn't, you're, you're just, you know, you're giving away the opportunity. It's like, uh, you know, a, a professional in any sport, any will never give out his edge, right? Like, I'm not going to go all in in poker until I have, right. a high, I have the nuts or a high probability play. I, I just won't, right? So why in trading give away that advantage? Yep. I mean, anybody could do a racial chart. Anybody could put a moving average on it. It's super like, I didn't do crazy TA here. Look, it's the moving averages. Now they're coiling and tightening. This is great, step one. But what you want is you want it to go upwards like that. And I'll look in the 70s. I'll show you the, look at that. Look at the 70s. Goodness. It's yeah. like, that's, look at a golden cross on the quarterly chart. That is a bull. That's, that's 1972 was the bull era for precious metals. That's when it started. Even mm -hmm. if gold price was going up before or not, it does, that's, that's how you define a bull era. And that could be uh, Bitcoin versus SPX. It could be any two instruments. Yeah. And that will tell yeah. you if you're in a bull era or not. Yeah. Let's talk briefly uh, about the stocks, uh, GDX, and uh, what you're seeing there. What are the charts telling you there? Well, GDX, GDX, GDX. Okay, quarterly chart. 
Quarter chart is very good to remove noise. So this is possibly because you need three three reactions at the very least to morph a trend line into existence. That's so right. now we had one reaction, two. With that wick coming in, now yeah. what's quarter ending? Uh, September, August, is this the month? In, no, July, August, uh, the quarter is ending be, in uh, end, of, end of September is beginning of the quarter. So we'll, we'll have to see. But what would be very healthy is not a breakout here. What would be healthy would just be a close the quarter right where we are, maybe go down here, and then that would be super bullish there. This, this would be, uh, you know, that would be target for JDX all the way up to, you know, 57. That would be much healthier here. And th the fact that you go sideways and slightly down, you're letting those moving averages catch up. Yeah. And yeah, that would that that would make it much more powerful move there. Pull flag. So if this was the pull, yeah, leading the flag. Then after that, you see it's even creating a higher range of targets. So for JDX, that would probably be the move. So I could do is, you know, what's a JDX doing versus SPX? Look, same thing. You're not even mm -hmm. outperforming SPX. So why, why are you in JDX, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. JDX will go bonkers. I'll do ASA versus SPX because ASA is the JDX. They're, they're the same chart, but I have more, um, I have more data. Mm -hmm. And look, here was the bull run for the miners outperforming SPX back here, 2001 to 2002. And then the miners. They, they had a nice little run here, 2005 to 2010. That was the bull era for the miners. But look, there's no evidence here at all that the miners are in any type of bull era. They're below the three-year moving average, the nine-year moving average, not even close. So I know everybody wants to catch a bottom, right? Like, you know, Perfect. that could have been a bottom, that could have been a bottom. A lot of people looking at this here. Oh, that's my bottom. Well, guys, well, what if it isn't? Oh, yeah. Like, what if it isn't? It's yeah. like there's no evidence you're an uptrend. So the probabilities of that being a bottom are much lower. It, it just, it, there's something that, that rubs me the wrong way there. I'm trying to, to rationalize the logic and people trying to catch these bottoms because they always trick themselves and saying, well, the percentage moves are huge from the bottom up. Of course they are. That thing's been destroyed so much. Anything that's a penny that goes up to, you know, $10, of course, the percentage moves are all, this is a log scale. The highest percentage moves and the, they're always look awesome. Like, you know, they look crazy off bottoms, right? But there's no uptrend yet. There's no uptrend yet. You know, I, yeah. there's, there's just none. So that yeah. could be just a, you know, that thing could just continue going sideways. And it all depends on time frame. Like, you know, it could go up here. Like it could go back down here. That could just be a bear flag. This, this whole, this whole pattern could just be a waterfall, right? Pull yeah. flag, like, you know, goodness, man, like that could happen. But people buy here, look, it depends where they're exit here. Maybe they're playing it all the way up here. But if you're buying here and thinking that this is a higher probability play at this stage, it's just not quite there so, yet. Yeah. So, but it is, there, there, there's a nice setup though. There's look at, there's. It's, it's, uh, that's the distance from the 36 quarter moving average. There's a nice setup, but it's still, it's like, there's still downwards pressure. It's like yeah. that, that moving average here, it gave some hope like a few times. Like if you look in the past, you know, you, you had some stuff here. So, oh, look, it's starting to, to move up. You know, somebody could have drawn the, their line like that. Like, you know, like I said, you always draw in hindsight. Sometimes mm -hmm. people in hindsight, they draw it like this because they think, but in real time, this is probably, let me, I'll show you this thing. Where's my, I'll just hide it here. See here, let's say I, I didn't know here. It's here. I'll put it on the line chart. Let's say somebody's doing his, uh, one touch, two touch, three touch, four touch, five touch. Oh, look, it's, it's a breakout here. It's a breakout, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, look what happened. Spray. It's, it's the downwards pressure of, of the, the moving averages still made that thing kill you, right? So this yes. is not, it is in the technical tense, tense, technical sense, a breakout of the trend line. But again, it's a nuanced game. That breakout, what is it actually worth, you know? 
You know, yeah. like we all have cars, but you have he has a Porsche, he has a Mercedes, that guy has a Honda. It's they're all different type of cars, right? So this is a breakout of a descending trend line, but it's descending. The steepness of it is important. And also you have the moving averages um, giving clues. So really it's just, let's wait and see if GDX has some nice setups, but we just need to wait, really wait and see according to the charts. Yes, yes. There's, want- there's a whole bunch of positive stuff happening for, for the precious metals complex. Gold's going up, silver's going up. Uh, the 10 year minus the two year is, um, is starting to maybe show signs that it wants to turn up. Look, if the U.S. initial jobless claims could spike up, I have like a level at 241,000. But if I start breaking out above that, uh, the, the gold versus SPX chart, the 10-year minus the two-year, uh, even the, the, the miners, they track. If I could overlay that to the uh, U.S. jobless claims, the ebbs and flows, they, they, they track. So... The, mine, the, the setup's there for the miners to break out, to do it, have a great run. But I, don't, I just don't get it why you would front run. Because from 2020 to 2024, the fundamentals and the narratives that miners are cheap or whatever is cheap and platinum is cheap, right? But platinum's gone nowhere. Palladium's yeah. just got like pummeled. Yeah. Four years of your life. Four years. Yeah. And you could have just looked at a moving average and say, look, I lost my moving average. That's the market telling me Hey, it's not time yet. You know, yeah. it's uh, yep. that's why, like, I'm happy you have technical guys on your show because fundamental guys, they, they don't see that, right? It's like yeah. uh, fundamentals are deceptive, but charts are never deceptive in the sense that a chart is a chart. I can't, of course, yeah. I could spin a narrative and draw trend lines a certain way, but if it's a, the price is the price, no matter, like, some people are scared of, I put a chart on the Twitter there. Maybe I could show you that one. Yeah. It reminds me of a saying in business, the numbers are the numbers, regardless of the reason. The numbers are the numbers. Yes. Who said that? He's a wise man. <laughs> it's like, I think it was Jim Collins. He said that the numbers are the numbers. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, look, I put this chart out. This is a silver chart daily. I just want to show here's 2008. The recession of 2008 was backfilled officially. I'm pretty sure. It's like, uh, so in 2008, January, officially they backfilled it. We were in a recession, you know, but look at that. The price of silver broke out here above that, uh, goodness, what's my moving average? My 96 day moving average broke out. I did a pull flag. Remember pull flag broke out here. I could have drawn a trend line. So silver, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people, oh, it's a recession coming, whatever the SAM rule or whatever, all these, the 10 minus two year, like all these indicators for that recession. But look, if you would have been paralyzed by fear, silver was a nut trend until it wasn't, but it ran 44%. It ran from $14 all the way to $21 mm-hmm. in a nut trend where just regular TA, if I, if I was oblivious to recession and all these people talking about whatever, you know, back in 2008, I don't even know there was a Twitter, but you had that run, right? Until that run could have continued upwards, but it didn't. It went sideways. It allows a moving average. You could have bailed here, and then you had a fine, and you could have bailed easily here and avoided all this drawdown. And look, the recession ended here. And if you wait for the recession to be ended, silver already bought in the abyss of the recession. And here, regained its 96-day uh, moving average, going up, pull, flag, pull. Like, you know, it's like, the chart is the chart, and if, if the market participants are smelling that the recession is going to end, they're going to start pressing it before, right? It doesn't yeah. look it doesn't have to be like 2008. There's recessions where um, it didn't behave like that, but I've done a chart like over, I don't know what's the probability, maybe seven times out of nine or whatever recession, silver likes to bottom in, in the abyss of one. So there's no reason to be feared. To be fear, to, to fear a crash, like, you know, the, the crash, the doomsayers every single day, every single year, like, this is the end. The debt is unsustainable. Goodness, right? You've heard this stuff since, since 2020. Right. Like, like, even 2008, the debt is like, you know, just look at the chart uh, because there's always, there's always some factor that we don't know about, which it's like the, un- it's very hard for us to imagine what we don't know because we don't know it. It's hard to imagine it's there. But it's there. I don't know if it's making sense. So, yeah, that guy. If you think like you know the uh, 
the uranium, you know, has to go up. They're building these nuclear facilities and there, there's a shortage. Okay, that's fine. We know that. But you have to ask yourself, what don't I know? Right. The cap or the capital flows is the rate of the N2 being withdrawn by the Fed. Do I know about that? Do I know about uh, some other th thing that could impact the, the uranium price? Is, is some uh, billionaire uh, sheik in Saudi Arabia that owns oil, is, is he shorting uranium? While I think it's bullish, but he has, you know, he's, he's going against me. There's always somebody else taking the opposite position of us. Yeah. So it's the aggregate of all these people that's creating the price chart. That's why the price chart never deceives because it has all of that. And it just breaks my heart when I see people that are trapped in a narrative. They played, they have the narrative, the price went up with them. Great. But then the price starting losing the daily, the weekly, all those moving averages, but the fundamentals never change. And now, goodness, it's like, yeah. are you They're gonna stuck. get it all back? Yeah. yeah. They're stuck. Uranium is a great example because it really now, is recently. It's a good recent example. So. It's a recent example. It is, look, I'm not in the long term. It's still an uptrend. It's still an uptrend, but now now it's been creating a lot of pain because yep. all all tops always start with a short term correction. All of them, but not yep. all short term corrections are market tops, right? So you yep. just got to decide once you enter in a correction, how much pain am I willing to take? Like you know. I'm in, a, I'm in a weekly defined correction that it could last months, six months, one year in time. And the price, let's say my moving average is super low. I could lose 20, 30%. If I'm willing to accept that, take that risk, stick, out, st st yeah. st stick it out. But you have also to have to accept that that could have been the top and that correction mm -hmm. could fail. And that was the market top. You'll only know in hindsight, that was the top. You'll only know in hindsight. So my best advice, I'm not financial investor, but I don't see the counter argument of just stepping aside. It's like insurance in, uh, just take yep. some insurance, step aside. Why, yep. why not go cash? I don't get it. Is it because you have 34, 30, 40 miners and it's a pain for you to sell all of them and you don't want to pay commission fees? Then trim down on the, um, the amount of miners or stuff you hold. Hold one or two that are very liquid, like chemical or whatever, and play that one. You, you, don't, yeah. you don't get the capital flows because if, if you have too many stuff, if the, the technicality of selling it's too much of a burden for you, then you're dead man walking because you'll always trick yourself into holding because, ah, ah, it's tax season. I don't even know what that means. Ah, I, like, I don't even care about the tax. I never consider tax purposes because I sell the charts failing because if I don't sell, the price could be much lower. And even the taxes that I would have saved, I, I, I'll get demolished. Right. Yeah. Right. Taxes, right. guys, is the cost of doing business. Yeah. It's just like, I don't, we don't, stock traders, we don't pay for walls, we don't pay for anything. The, the taxes you pay and the commission fees, that's the only cost of doing business, right? You're not a pizza store owner. You don't have employees. So for me, if a trend's broken, I do not care what it, like, it's broken. It's like, I exit tax. Yep. I understand there's penalties, there's stuff. And I just get in, you know, I get in, the, I'll get in later when it resolves upwards. Yeah. Well, Patrick, I want to think, we'll end on that. I just want to thank you so much for your time. I think you're an exceptional trader. You do, uh, you're also very humble. Um, so everybody out there, if people want to do business or are a fan of your work as uh, I am, how do they find you and how do they reach out to you? You're so nice, Andy. Yeah, I look at Twitter, uh, Batcharts1, or the our, uh, website I have with Kevin Wadsworth there, northstarbatcharts.com. Like we do this stuff all the time, you know, uh, pr protect your, your capital, uh, always evaluate through multiple lenses to make sure, you know, you. You get the weight of evidence behind you. And uh, it's never about bragging rights and stuff like that. That might be, that's super clickbait. It, of course, sometimes, you know, it just happened, like I like called the Bitcoin top in 2021, but it's not that I, I wanted to call it. I just pointed out that there were more evidence that it was probable at, at that moment. Yep. It just happened, you know, that it was a top, you know, or, so that, you know, that's not right. Go, go for, uh, reliability go for consistency and that's going to keep you in the game much longer than always trying to, to pick a bottom or a top yeah i would agree all right i will put all of this in the show notes below this as well as in the um the podcast again i just want to thank you so much for your time thank you andy i appreciate it Bye.